Thank you very much, Sam. Um, I feel very lucky to have met you uh, on a story. Sometimes you meet the most interesting people uh, doing stories and stay in touch with them. Um, and, and also, sometimes you find stories in the most interesting ways. The, the, the little story I'm going to talk about for a few minutes here, I, I stumbled upon it at a, at a dinner. Um, at a dinner party, I was sitting next to a doctor who works with Medicine Sans Frontier, and um, I asked him, like I often ask interesting people, where are we screwing up? We're a journalist. What, what's the story in your little world that we are completely getting wrong? And I was sure he was going to say uh, HIV or, or malaria or, or, or you know, multidrug-resistant TB. I mean, there are all these huge global health issues out there um, that we probably don't do a good enough job covering. But he said, you know what? I, I go to clinics in, in the most far-off places on Earth, and I just see people suffering unbelievably. And I know how easy it is to solve. Just give them morphine. But we can't do that. And I don't really understand why, but it is incredibly frustrating to me as a doctor that I can't help these people who are suffering from end-stage cancer and from chronic pain and all sorts of other ailments. And my ears perked up. I've been covering global health for 20 years, and I was, I was intrigued by this. So I, I pitched this idea to some of my graduate students at, at UBC Graduate School of Journalism, and they love the idea. Um, when we started researching this, we discovered that half the countries in the world have little to no access to morphine, which is a baseline pain treatment medication that's, that's common in, in, in all hospitals in North America and Europe. Um, it's cheap to make, a couple pennies a dose. There's no patents on it, so there's no issues of intellectual property. Um, it's easy to make, it's easy to distribute, it's easy to administer. You don't, have, you don't necessarily have to inject it. There, there are um, oral forms, and yet people don't have access to it. So we were intrigued. Um, my graduate students and I decided to take off and uh, we went to Uganda, uh, Ukraine, and India to, to trace this problem and figure out what's going on. Um, morphine is, um, is an inexpensive drug. It's um, easy to make, as I, as I mentioned, and yet it's, it is virtually impossible to, to find. Um, in a moment, you'll see some, some poppies. We'll jump ahead. <laughs> Um, I mean, po the, the source of morphine is poppies, um, the same, same flowers that grow in Afghanistan and India and many, many other places that are used for illicit means to make things like opium and heroin, um, these the illicit cousins of medical morphine. Um, and that is the, the rub there. Um, the same ingredients that, that make up these illegal drugs make up this uh, incredibly helpful drug that, that could uh, make the end of the life of people suffering from cancer and other, other conditions bearable. Um, in India, the uh, largest source of uh, medical grade morphine, these are uh, poppy seeds that my students filmed in India, um, there, are, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of acres of fields like this growing uh, medical grade morphine and exporting it all over the world. The irony is in India, only one out of 28 states has access to medical grade morphine. Um, doctors there simply told us they are afraid to prescribe it. Uh, according to the laws in many of the states, if they misplace 0 0.1 milligrams of morphine, literally drops of it, they could go to jail. So there's such fear um, about the, the drug laws around it. And what we discovered that was that people are suffering because of very strange quirky side effect of the global war on drugs. Um, so what's the solution? Um, at UBC School of Journalism, we sort of pride ourselves on not just presenting the problems, but also trying to, to present solutions to the public, or at least explore them. Um, so we went to Uganda. We heard that Uganda, of all places, is a place that actually has found some solutions. You know, here's this country of 30-some-odd million people that's been war-torn for, for decades, um, suffered all sorts of, of, of um, challenges, and yet they're leading the way in Africa. Um, what Uganda discovered is one, one problem we have is the laws. So let's change the laws. And that's exactly what they did. Um, the other problem they have is in Uganda, and like many places in the developing world, there aren't very many doctors to assess a patient and to prescribe the medication. So the government decided, let's have nurses do it. Let's train nurses to decide you know, if and when um, morphine is appropriate, and we'll have them 
prescribe it and administer it. And that's exactly what Uganda did. They made it a, an actual right to have access to palliative care in that country. Um, and then they found simple solutions, like they mix uh, morphine, powdered morphine, with water and dye it three different colors, uh, green, blue, and, and red, based upon the uh, strength. And they simply tell people who may, you know, may not have um, the, the time or, or even sometimes the ability to, to read instructions or, or measure out with syringes exact doses, take a capful of the green or take a capful of the blue if you're in pain. Um, and what we found is we went to the, the most remote parts of Uganda and people with horrific cancers like you, I, I can't even start describing them, um, you know, festering wounds and, and uh, you know, some conditions that, that you would never imagine anyone um, under here. And you imagine this being unbelievably painful. And they're, they're comfortable. You know, they're able to take care of their families. They're able to get around. Um, it, it's had an enormous effect on the quality of life of of hundreds of thousands of people in that country. Um, I'll, I'll conclude by, by telling you what we've done with this project. Um, this was done under the international reporting program that, that, that I run at the University of British Columbia, and we took this material into Creative Commons and we gave it to Al Jazeera, who did a half-hour documentary for them. We gave it to the Glo uh, Global 16.9, and uh, they did a 20-minute documentary. We're doing another piece right now for CBS News. Um, unfortunately, it took us, it took a school with you know, philanthropic funding to search the corners of the earth to find this story. Um, this is a story, as I say, half the countries in the world have little to no access. Walk into any clinic or even just talk to a person on the street and you will find out this story. Um, this is low-hanging fruit, but unfortunately these days um, the mainstream media doesn't have the funding and doesn't have the will to send correspondents all over the world and to live there, and spend time and speak to people and find those remote, out-of-the-way stories. Um, so what we're trying to do at University of British Columbia, just to give a little plug to uh, our program, is we're trying to grow our little program into a, a larger global reporting center that would take on big projects like this and really fill the void for, um, for of what the, the mainstream media and the corporate media has unfortunately left behind uh, enterprise global reporting. Thank you.